Well, praise the Lord and good evening and welcome to our Biblical Foundations class and have some coffee. It's really good. Okay, praise the Lord. Well, Marsha and I are here at the house and um, we're just thank thankful to the Lord for all that he's done and all that he's doing. And uh, thank God for this morning service and, uh, and just uh, talking with people this afternoon. Wonderful, wonderful day in the Lord. Well, uh, today, tonight, we're having uh, service a little early. And uh, that is because we have some more things to do. And praise God. And we just thank God for the opportunity to be able to get into the Word together with you tonight. So let's get into the Word tonight. Um, but first, go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, praise you, love you. And uh, just so, so thank you so much. You are so good to us, Lord. Please uh, bless your Word tonight. Bless those that are listening in or that will listen in later. God, give them strength. Um, help them to walk in your word. Help them to walk according to your word. Lord, we thank you for your word. It's such a wonderful, wonderful thing to, for us to be able to reach in and and and, and read and, and learn and, and know more about you. And God, we thank you so much. And we just praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, tonight, uh, today, we're going to talk about we're going to look at the flood and the covenant, and, and you're going to say, well, what's that all about? Well, we're going to get into it, and, and um, if you looked at our description here, we were going to start in chapter 7, but I think that we need to give you a little background first, and you, most of you know the background, but maybe somebody out there is listening in for the first time and doesn't really know what the deal is with the flood, what, you know, what happened there, and why we have the flood. So we're going to give you some background, uh, some history on the flood and why we have the flood. And then we're going to reach forward because there's some covenants that God makes and establishes with Noah and, uh, and his, uh, and his family that are important, very important to, to you and I today. So let's, uh, dig in. So if you would, uh, turn to Genesis chapter six, we're going to actually start at chapter six to give you some background. Amen. Uh, Genesis chapter six, starting at verse one, and it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, they bare children to them. The same were mighty men, which were of old men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every thought or every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man, whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just and a just man and perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with God. And Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood, rooms thou shalt make in the ark, and shall pitch it within and without with pitch. And God gives him a description here of how he wants him to do that. So the, the background, the cause, the, the reason for the flood was the wickedness of mankind. It was, he was only, the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. He, um, God looked and all the earth had corrupted itself. All the flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. Uh, sin was rampant and men's, uh, really, uh, men had gone headlong into wickedness. And, uh, that, that's just not a good thing. And there was a, a point where God said, that's it. You know, the, uh, the earth was corrupt before God and the earth was filled with violence. And the Lord looked and said, behold, it was corrupt for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. God said unto Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me. The earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. So the Lord made a decision to destroy 
the world that then, that then existed uh, with a flood. And he has Noah build an ark. And he gives him exact exact specifications for this ark. Um, he, he says, make thee an ark, in verse 14, make thee an ark of gopher wood. Rooms thou shalt make in the ark. Thou shalt pitch it without, uh, within and without with pitch. This shall be the fashion of it. Thou shalt make it. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits. The breadth of it, 50 cubits. And the height of it, 30 cubits. Thou, a window shalt thou make to, uh, to the ark. And in a cubit shalt thou finish it above. And the door of the ark thou shalt set in the side thereof with lower second and third stories shalt thou make it. And behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh, wherein there is the breath of life. From under heaven and everything that is in the earth shall die. But with thee will I establish my covenant. And thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons and thy wife and thy sons' wives with thee. Of every living thing of all flesh, two of every sort shall thou bring into the ark to keep them alive with thee. They shall be male and female. Of the fowls after their kind, of the cattle after their kind, of every creeping thing of the earth after his kind, Two of every sort shall come unto thee to keep them alive, and thou shalt, and take thou unto thee of all food that is eaten, and thou shalt gather it to thee, and it shall be for food for thee and for them. Thus did Noah according to all that God commanded him, so did he. So God had made a covenant to keep alive Noah and his family and these and of every living thing, two of every sort. Now we'll find out more details here in a minute. Um, of uh, on the animals, but we see that God had made a, a covenant to keep them alive, you know, because Noah had found grace in the sight of the Lord. That is a good thing. And it said here concerning Noah that uh, that Noah walked with God. In verse 9, it says, These are generations. Noah, Noah was just man and perfect in his generations, and Noah walked with God. See, that was the difference between what Noah was doing, what the rest of the world was doing at that time, was Noah was walking with God. The rest of the world was walking with us themselves, their own imaginations, their own way. And and uh, it led to absolute wickedness because there was no standard. You know, the standard is God, right? God is the standard. Walk with God. In those days, walking with God is what was required, but they didn't. They walked with their own imaginations of their own hearts. They, they were filled up with all kinds of wickedness and corrupted the earth with violence. Here in chapter 7, we see, um, And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark, for, th for thee have I seen righteous before me uh, uh, in this generation. So Noah, because he was walking with God, God said, that in him he saw he was seen righteous before God in that generation. And because of his obedience to God, you think of this, that his sons, Shem, Ham, Japheth, their wives, um, and Noah and Noah's wife were all all rescued from the flood, as well as these animals. I mean, had it not been for him walking with God, there would have been um you know, we wouldn't be here today. We would all be destroyed. We, I mean, the world would have been destroyed and that would have been it. But Noah was walking with God. And that's good news for you and I, too, is is that, um, you know, in looking at that example, because all things that happened before were given to us as an example, um, looking at that, look how the Lord Jesus rescued all of us from our sins. He rescued us. He saved us because he was righteous, you know, in, in this world. He uh, alone with, who is righteous and we were all wicked all of us lost all of us following the you know our own imaginations of our own hearts thinking that we were doing good and when we were not doing good you know but then the lord jesus christ gives his life on the cross for our sins he dies in our place he pays the price he becomes that that ark of salvation for us and it, it is amazing to see that um, because of his obedience because of the lord's obedience you know, he, he brings to us life. He brings to us hope. He brings to us a joy, which we wouldn't have had. We would have been lost eternally without Jesus Christ. And truthfully today, if you don't have Jesus as your Savior, if you haven't repented of your sins and trusted Christ, you're still in your sin. And you need to repent. You need to turn from that. Because if you don't, the end is still destruction for you, just as it was for the first, the first world.
Let's go on. Of every clean beast, thou shalt take to thee by sevens, male, the male and his female, and of beasts that are not clean by two, the male and his female. Of fowls also of the air by sevens, male and the female, to keep seed alive upon the face of all the earth. Yet uh, seven days, and I will cause it to rain upon the earth forty days and forty nights. And everything, every living substance that I have made will I destroy from off the face of the earth. And Noah did according unto all that the Lord commanded him. And Noah was six hundred years old when the flood of waters came upon the earth. So God gives a warning and he says, he tells, he tells Noah in seven days time that he's going to bring the water. He's going to bring the rain and it's going to rain 40 days and 40 nights. Now, this is not just a little bit of rain we're talking about. And there's more that the Lord does here. And we'll see that here in a minute. Let's keep going. And Noah was 600 years old when this, when, uh, when the flood was on the earth. And Noah went in and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives with him into the ark because of the waters of the flood. Of the clean beasts and of the beasts that are not clean, of the fowls and everything that creepeth upon the earth, there went in two and two unto Noah into the ark, and the male and the female, as God had commanded Noah. And it came to pass after seven days that the waters of the flood were upon the earth. In the six hundredth year of Noah's life, in the second month, in the seventeenth day of the month, the same day were all the great are the fountains of the great deep broken up, and the windows of heaven were opened, and the rain was upon the earth forty days and forty nights. So, give you an understanding, <clears throat> God's pretty specific in details. Six hundredth year of Noah's life in the second month and the seventeenth day of the month. That's when, that's when all the fountains were broken up. That's when the rain came down. That's when. You know, um, the Lord broke up the fountains of the deep. You know, and I think about that fountains of the deep and, and we talk about things like that. If you can, you know, even now today, uh, many of you live in places where there's uh, giant underground aquifers. You know, there's massive underground aquifer in, uh, down where I used to live at in Texas, massive one. And um, you imagine all of these um, these fountains of the deep broken up and rain coming down and the flood was massive i mean it was massive it was worldwide it wasn't just a, a local flood and it wasn't two inches deep it was a massive flood that that uh, if you look at the evidence today you can still see evidence of the flood all around the world all around you know that's the that's the interesting thing you know is is driving in in Pacific Northwest and going down to the West, if you drive through those regions, um, absolutely tons of, of, of evidence of uh, a massive flood. You know, check out the Grand Canyon, you can see that. You know, it, it's just incredible, incredible evidence of a massive flood. And just the way that the animals um, were were pulled in just like it, when you have currents in the water, how water currents flow and capture items and debris and deposit them in one area. You know, we have we have evidence of that too, even with the fossil record in you know, like Montana, there's huge fossil beds that the animals are on top of one another. It it's it just again shows the the cataclysmic nature of this the flood it was it was it was huge. And uh, and it says that um, in the selfsame day entered Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, the sons of Noah, and Noah's wife and their three wives of his sons was um, with them into the ark. They and every beast after his kind and all the cattle after their kind and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth after his kind and every fowl after his kind, every bird of every sort. And they went in, in unto Noah into the ark two and two of all flesh, wherein is the breath of life. And they that went in, went in male and female of all flesh. You know, they get that right every time. It takes male and female to propagate the species, uh, you know, and it, they produce after their kind. So, you know, a male and a female human being produce a baby human, you know. I mean, that's what they do. You know, a male and a female human being don't produce a cat. You know, it doesn't ever happen like that, nor can you know, a cat give birth to, you know, a male and a 
a male and a male cat won't produce. A female and a female cat won't produce. A male and a female cat will produce a kitten, right? That's what they produce. They don't produce a dog, an aardvark, or anything else. So it's very specific how the order is that God has here, and, and he shows us how this works, and uh, the, he walks us through it because there's some folks that need to be walked through that these days. You know, they're kind of confused as to how these things happen, but that's how it happens. If you just read it, you can find out all about that. And, uh, you know, and it says, And the flood was forty days upon the earth, and the waters increased, and bare up the ark, and it was lift up above the earth. And the waters prevailed, and were increased greatly upon the earth, and the ark went up, went upon the face of the waters. And the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth, and all the high hills that were under the whole heaven were covered. Fifteen cubits upward did the waters prevail, and the mountains were covered. Wow. I mean, think about that. The mountains, all the highest mountains, you think Everest, you know, covered. Everything covered. Rainier covered. These mountains were covered with the waters from the flood. Covered. I mean, a tremendous amount of water. Tremendous. And all the all flesh died that moved upon the earth, both of the fowl and of the cattle and the beast and of the very creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth and every man in whose nostrils was the breath of life and all was, you know, and all that was in the dry land died and every living substance was destroyed, which was upon the face of the ground, both man and cattle and creeping things and the fowl of heaven and they were destroyed from the earth. And Noah only remained alive, and they that were with him in the ark. And the waters prevailed upon the earth a hundred and fifty days. So it gives you an exact account of how long, you know, how long the waters were on the earth. It's 150 days. We know that, uh, you know, how old Noah was, 600 years old. When, when it started, we know what month it says here, it, you know, the second month, 17th day. Um, is when the flood uh, broke out. So God gives this very specific account. This is this is a very specific, very specific account. This is not some generalized thing, you know. This is not some, you know, fantasy thing like the you know Chinese uh, you know story of uh, the world being on the back of a turtle or Atlas trying to hold up a globe. This that's ridiculous stuff. But this right here, this is accurate, and it's information that we have accurately from God is an account of days and time you know when it when this happened what what month it was what day it was what happened how long it lasted these this is this is like a news account I mean it and this is true news not that fake news stuff that you see a lot of places you know this is real the real deal and uh, we have an exact account of who was there who you know who survived who didn't um, and how they survived on the ark it says here, chapter 8, And God remembered Noah and every living thing and all cattle that was with him in the ark. And God made the wind to pass over the earth and the waters assuaged. The fountains also of the deep and the windows of heaven were stopped. And the rain from heaven was restrained and the waters returned from off the earth continually. And after the end of 150 days, the waters were abated. And it says here, and the ark rested in the seventh month on the 17th day of the month upon the mountains of Ararat. It didn't say the mountain of Ararat. It said the mountains of Ararat. It says what, when, the seventh month, the 17th day of the month. It said that's when it came to rest. And the waters decreased continually until the 10th month. And in the 10th month, on the first day of the month, were the tops of the mountains seen. So again, detailed account. When? these things happened when they transpired um fact for fact and it came to pass at the end of 40 days that noah opened the window of the ark which he had made and he sent forth the raven which went forth to and fro until the waters were dried up from off the earth and he sent forth a dove from him to see if the waters were abated from off the face of the ground but the dove found no rest for the sole of her foot and she returned unto him in the ark for the waters were on the face of the whole earth then he put forth his hand and took her and pulled her in, in unto him in the ark. And he stayed yet another seven days. And again, he sent forth the dove out of the ark. 
And the dove came in to him in the evening, and lo, in her mouth was an olive leaf plucked off. So no one knew that the waters were abated from off the earth. And he stayed yet another other seven days, and sent forth the dove, which returned not again unto him any more. And it came to pass in the six hundredth and first year, in the first month, the first day of the month, the waters were dried up from off the earth, and Noah removed the covering of the ark, and looked, and behold, the face of the ground was dry. And in the second month, on the seventh and twentieth day of the month, was the earth dried. And God spake unto Noah, saying, Go forth of the ark, thou and thy wife and thy sons and thy sons' wives with thee. Bring forth with thee every living thing that is with thee, of all flesh, both fowl and of cattle, and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, that they may breed abundantly in the earth, and be fruitful and multiply in the earth. And Noah went forth, and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives with him, every beast and every creeping thing, and every fowl uh, uh, whatsoever creepeth upon the earth, after their kinds went out, went forth out of the ark. And Noah built an altar unto the Lord, and took of every clean beast and of every clean fowl, and he offered burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord smelled the sweet savor, and the Lord said in his heart, this is very interesting, pay attention to this, and the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground for any more for man's sake, for the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more every living thing as I have done. While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. So God made a decision not to destroy man this way. As long as, as, long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest, you know, planting time and harvesting time, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night, these will continue until the earth does not remain. Now we know that Jesus is going to make a new heaven and a new earth. We know he's going to do that. But as of right now, it, everything continues as God had said it would. And God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth and upon every fowl of the air and upon all that moveth upon the earth and upon all the fishes of the sea. Into your hand are they delivered. Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you. Even as a green herb have I given you all things. But flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, you shall not eat. And surely your blood of your lives will I require at the hand of every beast, will I require it at the hand of man. And at the hand of every man's brother will I require the life of a man. Whoso sheddeth a man's blood by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of God made he man. And you be fruitful and multiply, bring forth abundantly in the earth, and multiply therein. And God spake unto Noah and to his sons, saying, I, And I, behold, I establish my covenant with you, and with your seed after you, and with every living creature that is with you, of the fowl, uh, and of the cattle, and of every beast of the earth with you, from all that go out of the ark to every beast of the earth, and I will establish my covenant with you. Neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of a flood. Neither shall there be, uh, neither shall any more be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, This is the token of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. And it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth that the bow shall be seen in the cloud. And I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. And the bow shall be in the cloud. And I will look upon it that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, This is the token of the covenant which I have established between me and between all flesh that is upon the earth. So we see here that God has established an, an everlasting covenant here. This covenant is between between uh, between man and, and all the living creatures that, that uh, you know, lived after 
you know, survived in the ark and were brought out. This covenant is between between the Lord and us and the, in every living creature that he would no more destroy the world by a flood. So he's not going to destroy the world by a flood. And we know that in the end, when uh, it is not destroyed by a flood, it's destroyed by fire. And it, we have we have this covenant with, from God that he would not do this because what does he say? He says here that for the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more every living thing as I have done. So mankind, the biggest problem for mankind is that man needs to be born again. We need to, you know, we're born with the with the capacity to sin because we're sinners. You know, we, we have that, you know, we have that because that's what we are. That's why we need to be born again. That's why we need Jesus so we can have life and have it more abundantly. So when we talk about the flood, you know, there's a lot to it. There's a lot of things. and But there is a covenant, an everlasting covenant from God, a promise. And he put his rainbow, you know, in, in the cloud. You see it on these, these rainy days. And especially here, if you're in Washington, you've seen a lot of rainy days lately, a lot of rain. And, and so you might have had an opportunity to see a rainbow. So when you look at that rainbow, remember that that is God's covenant. That is his promise to you and to every living creature on this earth that he will not destroy this world by flood again. And so we say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for your promise. And when you look at that, you can look up there and say, Lord, thank you for your promise. We so appreciate that. Amen. And uh, again, another evidence. But specific days. Look at how specific he was. This this month, this day, you know, he's very specific on his accounts. And he gives us that information so that way we can take it and, and understand that this is what God would have us to know. He doesn't do it randomly. He does it very, he, he never does anything without purpose. It's always with purpose. And he's showing us the facts of the account. He wants us to understand this happened at this time. And, and this is why it happened. And after it happened, this is what he did. And this is what man has done. You know, so praise the Lord. Um, hopefully you got something from that. This is about the flood and the covenant. God bless you. I pray that you have a fantastic rest of your Sunday. Um, and just remember to give God the praise. Anytime you see a rainbow in the cloud there, give God the praise. Say, Lord, thank you. Thank you for your promise to us. Well, that's all we got for you today. God bless you and have a wonderful, wonderful day in Jesus. God bless.